have control of how you react to things. Most importantly, you have the superpower to describe it. And above all, remember that you have the superpower to Welcome once again to another journey of the world. How to secure you on this is always if you have a good chance. This show is just us. It's a fact that we can create a beautiful thing. All questions, any question for all the members of the house, but for me, I'm going to question for all the members of the house. I said, I'm not doing that. The question where I am, you can just do it. And if you do it for cover, you have to do it. And you ask us the question, you rely on the guests here and the attempts to use the wisdom of God to answer all of these questions. So, to the back of the house, we can do it on the house of the house. But of course, when the conversation begins, the battle is not here in the spirit. Remember that we need to connect with us on all aspects of the world, on the new television, on Facebook, and on the new TV on Twitter. And we need to connect with us, drop your comments and submissions, and of course, what you said to the rest of the world. This is Just Ask. My name is Hoku Mo. As always, here is just us. We are about to present you the religions that can be connected to the soul of people that are living in the world. So that you can take them down as far as our connections to the black people, the old people, and so on. Everyone is going to be in this conversation. First of all, Pastor James O'Kine and Willis are my guests. Hi, it's good to see both of you. Thank you very much indeed for the contemporary. As I said, how have you been tested? Have you good? Good as you did, yes. Like what's your life? What else can we say? Very good to them. How are you? I've been great. And we better than saying it before. And it's just not a coincidence that we talk about God here because when you wake up, it's God. When you go to bed, it's God. When you're living your life, it's God. So God has a place for us. Thank you very much indeed for taking some time to speak to us and try to understand the issues we're about to discuss. But how have you been working as Drop It on our social media platform, television, and on Facebook, and on TV, and on Twitter, and on Instagram? Let's drop your comments. Let's know what you have been up to and how you are looking for about it. Well, it's not time to do our very first question. We're going on the streets. Let's take our very first question. So, I want to ask how hard it is to let go of grudges and bitterness. So, that's a very, very first question for today. Forgiveness. You're asking how you want to let go of grudges. Bitterness. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure it's coming from points where you do understand that even sometimes when you say that you, you let go, you really let go. But let's start off with this. It's quite big. I don't know how we, we, uh, we pray that the Holy Spirit will help us. Let me start off with Pastor O'Kine and the So, the issue of forgiveness, bitterness, holding grudges. Tell me about the thing that comes to mind when you hear of this well, I want to say that uh, it's very, very difficult. You see, if somebody from someone says that for uh, me seven times, it's not, it's not that easy, you know. Um, we need to understand that first of all, it's not easy for me because um, I was, I was the other time telling the congregation that. Uh, anything Jesus Christ has us to do is with us. It is not easy to do. So if, if Jesus is that for me, it is not easy for me. Love, it is not easy to love. So, so for me, the first thing that is to mind when we talk about forgiveness is that it is difficult to do. And it has, it has to be established. It has to be established because you, see, you cannot lie to people. You cannot tell somebody that, hey, why are you forgiving this person? You know, it is not easy to forgive. How about you? I'm really 
share with views of forgiveness mm-hmm. and bitterness and that it is hard. You know, it's, it's not easy. And when I hear about these words, it's something that everybody has been through. It does not respect any other person. It can be a president. You would have grudges against people. You can be someone who's a servant. You still have grudges against people. So it's, it's not easy at all. It's not easy at all. It's, it's, it's been established in that forgiveness is not easy. And so with that foundation, the question then is, what is forgiveness in you? At what point would you say, I have a really forgiven somebody? If someone has a really forgiven Is it by word of mouth or action? Or it's just something that is abstract? I come back to that. There's a, for someone to say forgive, what does forgiveness mean? It simply means to let go. Let go. Let go. To forget what has happened. Mm-hmm. And make sure that you leave it in the past. You see, and trying to extend the second part of love to the person. Because a lot of people say that, well, I'm forgiving you for what you did to me. But you realize that they try to keep some distance. So people forgive others, but still do some form of distance. Why do you think this person is forgiving the person? Oh, okay. Why do you think this person? You see, and I am, the other day I was in this picture, I realized that something great happened to me during Adam and Eve's time. I realized that. He caused Adam to lose his place in the garden. But before they lost that place in the garden, though, the evil was on the woman, not him. You know, but when God sat in of the garden and gave the curse of the garden and all of that, then Adam became the one who called the king. Adam had every right to tell him, go away, Adam. You called us to, I mean, we've been suffering here. Yeah. Well, Adam forgot about that. And they lived together. I mean, there was a strong bond, and they built a family together. So, actually, to, to let it go to what you believe is actually made a lot of great in life. What's exciting in that library? How about you? The phenomenon forgiveness. How does that come to you? And I see it's a great view from his end. But for me, forgiveness is. When you think about the issue or the matter, how you think about it, the present case. So, say if in the past it used to really hurt you, anytime you report the issue and you're accounting it to someone else, you are full of pain and bitterness. Now, you begin to talk about this matter and it doesn't hurt you anymore. It doesn't, you know, tickle your emotions. You are like, okay, it's fine. I'm actually looking. That is for me the measure of forgiveness. When Whatever has happened to you does not affect you anymore. So you can literally see the person walking by, and you don't have any openness towards this person because one, you recognize that the person is human, and then the person can hurt you, and you as a human can do the same. And secondly, so things happen, people are, and their discussions or their actions are always guided by their thoughts, where they've grown up, and so you have to give them that grace, that benefits of the doubt that, okay, this person did not know what he was doing. Or even if they knew what they were doing, it happened, let's move on. So that is forgiveness to me. Okay, so there's one thing we want you to create the opportunity to have a good thing to So we can do this that will help you. But this, in a case where your father, your mother, people who are dear to you, how do you and they hurt you. And for a lot of people, they are dealing with a hurt in either of the sympathy by their mothers or consciously done by fathers. And people are obviously angry. Let's deal with that. And the issue of holding grudges against people like this is difficult to present. And how can we walk ourselves through situations like this? What we do with that? Last two weeks, I don't know I was talking with one of you. And um, I realized that she was holding grudges with the father. So for years, she doesn't want to see the father's face. <laughs> and you realize that it is a practical thing happening. For me, I was on the past and I have gone through that before. You know, where I um, tried to take on the ministry, you want to do full time ministry, and the family says, no, you have to work, you have to do this. And then you are left alone to go and do your ministry. Like, you don't have anything to do with it. You always have a place of having a certain practice with the family. You see, but how did I let go of 
doing something. You know, I just have to understand that people don't understand what they are doing. And because people don't understand what they are doing, they just do it. Okay? And you cannot be, you cannot bear this consequence. No, 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 no. You cannot. <laughs> no. They just don't understand what they are doing, what they are doing. But like you said, you know, that is the case where your father, let's say your father did not look after you. You went out there in the world yourself, and you went through things. Some people have been raped, some, and a lot of things happen to people because they were neglected. So it is true that the fact that they have died or the fruit of the issue is this. For your father to do that to you, that's not necessarily in the Your father was not supposed to do that your mother gave birth to you, that's not necessarily me. Your mother, you must be particular. That is a system. That is what we are. That is what we are putting there. That your mother, your father gave birth to you, and that you have a responsibility to take care of you. That's it. You know, that is a system. Okay. But in the plan of God, in that is a system. My father gave birth to me. He abandoned me. Because he is not the one to take care of me. There is God's plan. There is somebody else to take care of me. But you see, until you have that mindset, you always say, you have to take care of your father, 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 you who were given the food that their father's mother was given, and they never took care of it. And rather, people came in and they were, that is where they scholarship and they put their father to go. You know, but until you have moved away from thinking, and look, hey, this is what my father is going to do for me, that's it. We always, we always yeah. come back. We always. Do. So let's let's still spare the waters a bit in terms of scenarios. So again, there's a lady out there. You know, some fathers even go ahead attempting to have carnal knowledge with their daughters, and I have experience like that where I know a lady that had the father attempting to do that. Till today, there is no way the lady wants to seek out to either the father because she's hurt. She cannot believe the father can do that. In this case, what do you do? What should you tell the children? It's really hurtful to have a father do that to you. But one thing about brothers people do not understand is that they affect you as a person more than the other, the other person. So yes, your father did that to you. It's sad, it's disgusting, it's not... It's not something you should exalt or pray. But then what happens to you? What has happened to your heart? And when you think about life, God has given us purpose. God has given us assignment. And these are little, little things that hold us in running towards that purpose and assignment. So for grudges, you have to let go. You have to make up your mind that, look, my future is way bigger than this thing. Yes, it hurts me. It destroyed me. It changed my personality about how I view men or how I view people. But I will not let this thing affect me. I need to move. I need to move. And God is some, um, someone once said that, or I think it's Nelson Mandela, he said that when you have bitterness in you, it's like giving poison to your enemy and expecting that your enemy dies, but then it kills you. That is, that is about God. That's about bitterness. It doesn't help you to move. And I will call some time in my life to us who I knew it wasn't severe as this case, but then someone did something to me, and I felt like, why would a person do this to me? And I was so bitter. I was surrounded with family and friends, but nothing they said made me feel okay. And I exposed myself to all sorts of things just because I felt that I was in the right to feel bitter about this person. But another person was living their life, and I was stuck in one place. Yet I prayed to God, God, help me. God, give me favor. God, I want a job. But my heart wasn't in the right spot. My heart was so heavy. And so until I got to the point where I said to God, God, I really cannot forgive this person on my own accord. And that's what most people think. That but, but let's now walk through that process, yeah. the liberation process. So how did you come out of that? Yeah, so for me, I have to accept that I cannot forgive this person on my own. Mm -hmm. Like me as a person, me as this. If the person was standing before me, I can't forgive you because then my flesh tells me that, no, you hurt me. And so I cannot see it. But what does God say? And we, God in his wisdom gave us the Holy Spirit. And so the Holy Spirit comes in to help you to forgive this person. And so that's what happened to me. I told God, God, I live in your hands. 
deal with this person for me, not in the place of judgment, because God is love. Mm -hmm. And so how you deal with a person is not the same way that God would deal with that person. Mm -hmm. But I had to leave it with to God's hands and say, God, I don't know what to think about this. Please sort this thing out for me. I'll come back and ask you uh, after that prayer uh, what the consequence of the war is. How about you get experience with your parents uh, then you can't relax, tangle with them as you can decide if it went to I used to be worse. And I remember uh, one of the days at the public school, uh, my wife was pregnant. And uh, it was very difficult at the moment for me. I realized that Charlie, nobody's calling me to me. I left alone, alone, alone. And I'm just. And these are people who are just like, yes, yes. yes. A lot of times, that is how it is. Yes. These are people who are just like, so the understanding you thought that they would have, they need to make it easier. It's to be very difficult. Very difficult. So, so I, I know one of the days I was just in the room and I was just thinking about what is happening to my wife. My wife was like, I was thinking, okay, so I was like, oh, alone. I want to take my phone and talk to my mom. I want to take my phone and talk to my sister. Charlie, this is what's happening. You get that? Yes. And you hear another voice. Charlie, what's happening? Back out of this place. Forget the one. Forget the one. Charlie, you're a man. Forget the one. Make them do what they do. No survival. So I have to make them do it. These are the people. The point was to start to put them on the top. And still was in that for two days, we don't know what they're doing. I think this is this is a practical example. So, so you know. went back and came to them. Yes. I went to them. You went to them. I called my mom. I said, Mommy, you know, this is what has happened in the past. Three years ago, this one. Three years ago, this one. And I want you to understand that I'm not happy with what has happened. But I forget about it. So I went to them. I called my brother for a bit, I called my mom for a bit, I called my sister for a bit, and I said, So you have to shed off some ego. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You know, to go along with, you know, to, to, to be angry people and put on crosses, you know, a certain ego in you always goes out. That's what happens. In the case where you go to the person and they are not really. You want to meet them today? Yeah. And let's I've also experienced that the mm -hmm. same thing. I went to the person knowing that the other person was in the room. But I did that to sort of accept also my my part in whatever had happened. And secondly, so when you read the word and you come across the scripture where it talks about God being the defender, there are many things that you don't stress about. You go to the person and then you send the text. Yes, your ego is a bit bruised because then you know you are in the right, but then you are apologizing to this person. The person is like, I don't want to have anything to do with you. You just walk away and do what you are supposed to do. Whatever it is, God has a way of turning around everything to make out for your good. God is a defender. He's very, he can vindicate you from anything. So sometimes realize that that act of love or that text message that you send to the person. At the moment, it may not have done anything. It may have looked like you were the fool. But in years to come, realize that that person, yeah, that person would actually come back to you. You know, and that act of love encourages the other person to what, be a better person. And that's what God wants at the end of the day. Well, that's it. And it's a broad topic I can tell you that most important thing is that it is to establish the plan. It is difficult. But we need to apply this one. What is that? Knowing that God. Come in as a defender, ask the Holy Spirit to be of help to you, and also take the action of shedding off the people. Most important thing also for them is to ensure that you know that when you keep the brothers and the others, it brings you the life. So, which one would you choose? Your life or going ahead to die because of the glorious people? All right, so we'll go for a break. When we come back, we will connect with. The next question, and of course, my guest has to sit it here in the anyway. So that's my right. <laughs>
I know probably you disagree with us on what we have said. You are saying you do know you can do it as I can, and you don't know how to do it. Well, drop your comments and your submissions. Uh, uh, so, so, if you want to know what your experience is like, or how you dealt with some of these experiences, uh, by extension, also, if you're looking for help as well, drop all these questions and your comments on our socials. We will tell you that the face of what my belief is in the future of the future. I still have my guest in the studio, Pastor James Walker, and this is what I am like. Well, we go back to the street. We'll take our next question to come back for the answer. Yes, in this time and age, we see a lot of people coming to church without their physical Bibles. And I wanted to, to ask if it is wrong to use your Bible on phone in church. That's the question I want to ask. So, you hear some, especially men of God, say, you young people are teaching you, you don't want to buy the Bible, Bible, the hard copy. And you are here with your phones, uh, you are distracting, and all of that. What do we think, or what does the person think about it? Uh, if you like Bible on phone or if you like tablets and all that, uh, you know what people have said. Eh? There are even conspiracy theories around these things. So let's demystify some of these things as well. Let me start off with you, Felix. Is it a sin to have your Bible on phone? Did God did not choose that people phone? Bible. Did you see a Bible? So what do you say? What do you say? Think about the sovereignty of God yeah. and the fact that God created everything and the wisdom of man, God gave it to man to give us technology. You don't, you don't start things as sin because there is no part of the status quo. So, what am I saying? So, you know, Bibles have been physical. Why have they been physical? Because in the, in the past, we didn't have technology. I mean, where would you find a tablet, right? But well, right now, we do have technology, we do have phones. And for me, having my Bible on the phone has blessed me more, like to be honest, than my physical Bible. Why? Because my phone gives me access to different Bible versions. Sometimes you read a version of NLT. And you, you want to understand the scriptures some more. Like, it's not just about English, you want to understand it some more. And so there are some versions like the King James Version or the Amplified, or even the Passionate Translation, translation sorry, that gives you an insight to what God is actually saying. And so for me, when I pick up my phone, I turn off my uh, notification, that I do not disturb, and I go in there and then read the word, and I have time to highlight the most important scriptures in my life. Having a physical Bible doesn't mean that you will not be distracted. You can literally have the Bible in front of you and your mind is somewhere else. Yes, that's right. So then having the Bible as a physical thing and then having it on your phone, doesn't change anything. What changes is your desire to know what is in there. That is what we should focus on. That is what we should preach to people that it's not just about holding the Bible that makes you look like a Christian. When you have your phone to us, well, you can be more focused than ever to us. So we have to preach that. It is the content. It is what the story really wants to do. Yeah. So, so the issue has to do with maybe the trend that has to be in the future. So how distracted we can be. Nowadays, Pastor, people are very dirty. I don't think you say that. You know, somewhere last month, okay, in church, right? I mean, I was just going through the congregation while I was preaching. I came across this gentleman. I see him was reading scripture. And the truth of the matter is that that is why a pastor who writes this to speak you out of using the force of the spirit. I believe in the spirit. You are using it and you can see the message from the other pastor. So, whether you're a bishop or a bishop or whatever, you can be distracted. And that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. That we just need to come to a place where we need to understand that it's not the same. First of all, this is that using all the things of the Bible is not the same. 
Well, you can, you can go back to the scripture, you know. You can go back to the scripture in Exodus. Let me just read it. In Exodus chapter 24, verse 12, the Bible says, And the Lord said of Moses, Come up to me into the mouth and be there, and I will give you two books of scripture. That was when God was the one who was going to be So, over a period of time, then things changed, then they started writing in scroll. Then in Revelation chapter 10, verse 1, and 2, the Bible said, And I saw another angel, and mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as if there the sun, and his feet as in of fire, and he had in his hand a little bit. Okay, so then again, then who came here? So stone. Yeah, school book. So stone, school book. Now we've got some things. So I'm coming to church and you can decide this. And I easy English also. And I think you have to carry this. So what I've seen people actually do these things is to dedicate to tablets. So the throne is the throne, but the tablet is where the Bible is. So people who can afford it, and it's underlined afford because look, the instruction is going to be there. The fact that you can and see what happens is there to reach out for the thing too. Because the tablet to that is only dedicated to download it and buy it and have a version to it. It's a little bit of 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 a little bit was out of the and I was out of the public. It was just a All of the sudden, that was in front of the world. Yeah. Right. And yeah. some, 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 some new photos and new yeah. 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 So we just need to understand that it's a good thing. But it's not a sin. When I just have to put it in some other sense. What about the conspiracy theories that we have heard about the world? The thought being created to serve the purpose and the agenda of the anti-country and the anti-country. We've heard a lot of questions that have spoken about even apps, some apps that are there in the connection mind to what is going to happen uh, in the end time and all that. What about those? What do you answer? Okay. That's a very good question. But you should understand that anything that God creates, the devil will always try to create a counterfeit or something to destroy it or to destroy it. And these pastors that are talking about I mean, the technology and phones to which that's a human being or the agenda of the enemy. When you go to church, what actually displays on the screen? Mm. And there's a technology the 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 microphone. Microphone is technology. The microphone is technology. The tablet is technology. Every single thing is technology. So I do not think that is the kind of things that we should be preaching. Because then, as Christ says, if something affects you, yes, it may not affect the other person. But if it affects you, cut off from that thing. So to say that, cut off your arm or take out your eye, because you know it's affecting me. So personally, I know that there are some apps that do not work for me. So I believe it. Is it trendy? Yes. Would I feel like I'm um, glad? Yes. Um, but I know what happens to me when I go on that particular app. So you cut it off. And so we should rather preach that if there are things that are affecting you, we need to accept that. Yes, it's been affecting me and I need to stay out of it. Because as for technology, yes, definitely the enemy will try to use it to distract the believer and the believer. It's his duty, every single thing, even when it comes to clothing, anything to think about, the enemy would always try to create a second agenda. But technology is also a blessing, like we are perfect. I mean, we're always going to church, which was perfect, which was great, and now it is so great. But COVID was exposed by the technology where now we have online, you know, online services, online churches, and we are so blessed. You can be in action and still be blessed by, say, Pastor TGJ, or you can be in ITGC and be blessed by a different pastor. It was just amazing having believers and even people that do not feel like they are not church goers still connect with pastors online. So technology can be a blessing. It's a way to it can be a blessing. It depends on what you are doing with it. Especially in church or Christ time, Christ time, it has to be focused. You have to focus. But 
the issue then comes in, and we're not for conservative and people who say that it is, it has to be the Bible. So they go about saying that look, it's the Bible and nothing else. How would you want to answer to that? Would you want them to? Because again, once we come back and say it's because God's own wisdom for us to take it, we are saying we are making excuses for all of that to be free in Christian life. How do you answer to that? There is coming a time where you will not see the Bible. There is coming a time where you will not see the Bible. Not even talk of an app. There is coming a time. We get there very soon. So, so what are we saying now? The truth of the matter. That's why I enjoy um, just our life and meditate. Meditate. This book of the Lord shall not be found out of our mind. Now, you have to just think. You have to enjoy it. So the way that time comes, it's in you. It's in you. So the word is actually expected to be now. Not something you are holding. Yeah. 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 So Jesus, when he encountered the enemy, was saying, for oh, it is written, for oh, it is written. He didn't go to put a book somewhere and start reading. But when he said, it's supposed to be in us. It's supposed to be in us, not a manual, not a phone somewhere. Mm-hmm. The end of the matter is that the word is supposed to be in us. So the young people must understand, especially not this not only the people who are going to understand, understand that the truth to be in you, the truth created in you, to be in you, and of course our friends and brothers on the other side know how to do it where someone is called maybe a sheep because everything is in there from the first stage to the last stage. And so we need to keep it in mind. So recently, recently, okay, I, was, I was just talking to the few who got to say, realize that Yes, you have to do it. I need to give you two scriptures. Oh, my word. Oh, please, yes. It's a noble thing. Mm-hmm. Just two scriptures. Even John 3 16, the food of the food, something with three words. You can tell him, you can go on the street and I'll just, I mean, go, go, go back to the street and do it. And have to go to food. I mean, something just very easy. So, so at the end of the day, the way I'm trying to explain it, so it should be an attempt to rather get us to get it within us. Yeah. Yeah. Forget about where exactly the people are going to within us. So I remember some time in my life, I've been a Christian all my life, like yeah. I was born into a Christian family, and I always had a Bible, and I think that I even, I even like it more when the Bible looks beautiful. So I've always liked Bibles, but the word was not in me. I had to get to a point where now I had to... How do you feel it like it's the way? Yes, yes, you can like yes. write it down, memorize it, say it to yourself. Not because you want to fulfill some obligation or religious check that oh you're a Christian, but it helps you as a person, it helps you to move. And sometimes you can be walking on the street and someone will ask you a question. What then do you say to the person? And the word is what regulates the word of God right here and regulates our lives. You can be so you have to speak the word, you have to go into the word and you know. Take it out for yourself and let the Holy Spirit minister that to you. That is the, that's the whole importance of having the Bible. You can, that, that is it. I, I, I'm wondering whether we should do this Sunday school thing again. Yeah, because, look, I don't know how it was. It's, it is now. I know how it was before. I don't go there now. We only go and the kids there. But those were the times where we were at yes. I don't know how it is. I mean, you are living in a church. In there are times where a lot of churches who have. Children come to the church. Every Sunday, they are giving us pictures of the Bible. They are giving things to the cartoon. It's a Bible story. So, like Joseph and the Pope and his brothers, Daniel, you know, and all of that, he says, We did the Bible. We have a family man. Like, these are cartoons they are giving to the color to paint. And it gives them a certain type of picture and view. What the Bible is all about. But we keep the Bible. You know, other churches, I'm telling you, some of them are stupid fools. I mean, actually, black people. I know there's so many churches. That's what I'm saying. I said that was around. 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 I mean, gravity towards and teaching those because what can we do without the word? What can we do? Well, 
what do you make of the issues of the world? And most importantly, being a form of the soul. Well, this is what we think. What do we do when we go to our social media? Drop your comments, let me send it there. If you could have to share the rest of the world, because if there are questions as well, and submissions, drop it on Facebook, in the television, might in the next video, is on Twitter, and Instagram. Like the things, like the things. Let's know what you think. Because I'm going to watch this. So while you're watching now, you can quickly really drop the comments to share with the world. Well, this is just us as the I'm like, yes, here we will take a break. When we come back, it's a good thing. Conversation cycle is makes my everything. We did months and years. I'm sure you're enjoying the service of the show. I'm just here as well as I'm people. I trust that it's going to be a But there's a letter for today, and I want to speak to you today. So when we come back, we'll get the thoughts for that. I was molested by my father when I was young and it's been a burden for me now. I haven't been able to forgive him and I feel it has something to do with me. I'm not finding a partner. What do I do? It's very difficult for me to forget the pain he put me through. Sad one. And, uh, as I said, I had this experience from some of you to me. What do you do? Especially now that she's connecting it to the fact that she's having it. And so you can do it. And there's a first of all, I want to turn the call to see. It is very interesting that she's able to connect it to see. She feels because she's not able to forgive her father yet. She's not able to, to find her partner. Or her action. Yeah. Her action by the father is what could be telling her. So as maybe to have a spiritual connotation. Um, you see, it's good that she has been able to look at the father. Mm-hmm. Now, the whole thing is that we need to get to the place, and I'm talking to her now, that, you see, you were supposed to be blessed. And I'm trying to use this very important to tell you the truth. You would think that that was not supposed to be. But it didn't even come to say, you know, I think it's going to be something that you can do or not. Because that had something to do with your life at that particular season. Until you appreciate and understand that, look, this thing was supposed to happen for me to come to this point in life. Now, there's a story. I was very glad when she came to this and listening to that at some point. You know, the daughter, you know, he did the daughter at the point. It wasn't an easy thing when somebody had a child at the point. He went through a lot of issues. I was able to come out of that. You know, we need to understand that anything at all we go through is for a particular reason. Get to the end of this. So once it has not killed you, once it has not killed you, and it's not a story. Yesterday I was talking to a lady, I was being with her, and I was telling her, you know, the early part of her life, a like, few things that are going to be lost, but it's not that I was telling her, she should never go back to the family because that was supposed to help her to have the entire family and not necessarily to help her, just to cause her to be in a shell. In this case, she is so, I know that my father will not take me, and I feel I want to do it so I can have a little bit of But what I'll say is that look at the many things you have done, which God should have punished you, and I still have punished you. So there's a chance, there's a chance. So just go to the rest. Just go to it. Like the leader was talking about, the father is in Nigeria, and I told her, look, try to talk to and it's just like it's, it's an alignment. It's maybe for someone that the lady also spoke about this one. 
And one thing I would say, like it's truly a sad story, it's something that should happen to anybody. But then one thing you should know, you know is that we are stronger than whatever happens to us. And that is why we have to cite ourselves that we are strong. Because the root of not forgiving someone is because you feel like you cannot, you don't have the strength to do so. And then you are justified in doing so. Why do you think about yourself and you say, I am strong enough to do this because God has not empowered me to do this. I can't forgive him. And it's not easy to say, I'm going to forgive this man. But then you think about the consequences on yourself. I mean, you are innocent, right? And so why do you keep putting yourself in that, in that hole? You have to rise about it. I remember the, um, the story of this mother, and her father did say to her, he arrested her, abused her, even to when she was grown. And in her family, no one could talk about it. It became like a bad woman in the family. And But she had to forgive this man. She had to even, you know, take her father to the salvation process. So the father became saved at the point of it. And now look at this man, like... She has risen about the past. She has risen about every single thing that tried to take her down. And she's talking to people, impacting the people. So the main thing is that what has this situation done to me? It's not about your dad. It's about you now. You are in control. You couldn't control the actions of your dad. But you can control yourself. And you can take charge and say, you know what? It hurts me. But I have to rise about it. I have to be strong. I have to be strong for myself, for my kids. Because one thing that we don't know is that we radiate whatever we feel. So someone comes into the room and the person has a vibe and you're like, yeah, I like this person. But when the person is sad, you can't tell. And that's what's happening to her right now because although she's not speaking about the situation, she radiates that vibe that, you know, this hostile aura around you or, you know, environment it will tell yes. And it will tell us every good thing, not just a man, but every good thing that tries to come to you. And the Bible even says that we should lay aside, aside every weight. So God knows that there are things that will come upon us that are waiting and will not help us run the race. So, wow. How about then we address the issue of fathers and men of the people must also understand that they there's something that we need to do as a basic this subject is not a subject of today. It's been a subject with your father's subject with daughters and all of that, big daughter. It's been for years. And you we cannot control that by what you have to do with your person. How you react. So that from the beginning, yes, how you react, that's the only thing. You, see, you cannot speak down much to correct people and bring them in alignment so that they don't offend you. You can never do that. But the only thing you can do is, to, is how you react. And that's what makes you strong. That's what makes you strong. We can talk about it. We have, to, we have to come up with a campaign where people don't need their daughters, come up with a campaign where people don't molest their children here and there. It's a high degree for the person. That's not the value of the value of the value. Just as I said from the beginning, it's not the value of the value. It's not the value of the value. It's not the value of the value. It's so impossible to show how they are. But we can't be successful. Well, this is beautiful, the beautiful conversation, and this is what we do here on Dominion Television. A lot of content uh, uh, that resonates with you. And so for you, anywhere you are, and you feel that way, there must be more of those, more conversations, more content that are developed right here from the top of Dominion Television. Then, one thing you need to do if you are within Ghana, just take your phone right now and become a partner and support that. People who become content developers uh, to uh, you know, develop Christian content. Star 789, star 200. Cash is the number of the code for the phone and become a partner. That is when you are outside Ghana, you can go to Quarter Radio in the box, or better still, alternatively, you can do our website, like the media. 
TV by doing a television dot com dot net forward slash partner. And then you're good to go. Partner with us and you're a supporter. And so you can put in something small to uh, lead the way for something to like this. And that's about it. We'll take a break when we come back. We're a very fine now. And of course, for our guests. We'll be here talking about a lot of things before we do the final words or what we discuss with the touch on forgiveness and all the gratitude and the beautiful life of the sin. With our not mobile phone, we're having a Bible debate today. So we're going to do a letter from our dear friend, which is the Harvard Minister of the Bible. Also, we started to do all the interactive in terms of the ministry, so anything that can share us. And it is a good idea. I'm a pastor, right? So it's a very fun place to have some sense of hope. This is a beautiful place to have some sense of hope. Which is headed by this of the So, I'm one of this as a specific. And then we've been up to, I think, many more shows for that. That's basically the point to let people understand the truth of the world. Because a lot of things are going on, a lot of stark doctrines, you know, but we believe that we want to let people understand the truth. And I think that if you brought us here to so, so that is what we do now. We do the word that we do. We do the word that we do. We do So I'm actually a faithful Christian writer. Oh, okay. Tell me about yes. it. So I just write blogs on WordPress, just teaching people how to have a personal relationship with God. Because I'm coming from a place where people do take to you how you should worship God. And I mean, there's, so, <laughs> there's honesty in that. I mean, you cannot take away the fact that you have to pray after worship and all. But realize that we have different personalities. And sometimes people feel weird that, like, oh, I'm not doing this, so then I'm not a Christian, I'm not enough this. Yes. So what I do in my right hand is just to encourage people, just to show them how to have a personal relationship with God. And I do that with that. And it's, it's been a while. I, I saw something Christian, Christian related, right? Yeah, that's what you So I do. I write it on WordPress. I publish it on Instagram so as well. Okay. I add videos to make it useful, vibrant, to get people to know that look, you can be talented, you can be an anyway. That's any kind of You can be an actor. You can be any stage you want. But God has called you. And this is how you should have a relationship with Him. The fact that you want to be a Christian doesn't mean that you have to let go of the personality that God has placed in you because it is very perfect. So that's what I do. And I'm also a student at the Ghana School of Law. So, oh, yeah. okay. 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 Yeah. Okay. That's exciting. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Yes. Yeah, so not an exciting. When I'm not going to school, I arrive. Yes, and I do other things. It's amazing. It's a journey. And just a lot of young people who want to come back to them as well. Let's not touch on the last words, our final words, and start with you. That's all. All the things that comes to the people and say, and to build them down. I think some fashion is that so far, I'm going to say that Christianity is coming. Christianity is coming. And we need to understand that we cannot hold back, like Bliss said, we cannot hold back your 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 God-given talent, you know. Uh, people think that. Um, being a Christian means you have to be sanctimonious, you have to walk in a certain way, you know, you have to practice, you have to wear some material cloth. I don't think, no, 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 it's not it's not it's not it's not it's it's not 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 Bishop said that uh, people keep stepping on your toe. If you don't want people to step on your toe, oh my well, what it means is that you cannot do it. I can do that. Friends is very, 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 very,
So that's the next thing we need to do. So I agree that the world will be a very different place for all of us. We are coming to a place of knowledge that our society and our friends are only put on the table. It's good. Like you just said, that world will be always out of the Yes, yes, yes. And that's why I like the way you just said it. How about you, Chris? I would say that whatever happens to me, your future is much bigger than whatever happens to me. Your future is brighter. I mean, God died on the cross just for that. And so anything that happens to you, ask yourself, is it worth it? Is it worth stopping my future for this? And that's what you do when it comes to forgiveness, when it comes to letting go of grudges, because realize that the grudge as compared to the future God has for you is a tiny piece of this whole thing. And if you are able to channel the grudge to build up yourself as a person, you become a better person, you actually excel. And then the people that hurt you would gain from that inspiration. So not all hope is lost. You are still a winner. You are not a loser by confronting someone and apologizing, knowing very well that you're right. You're a winner. You're stronger. And you can move in life once you let go of every grudge, every form of bitterness. That's, that's what I have to share. Indeed. And so when God uh, spoke about Adam and Eve, I'm sure he was thinking about not in the sense of coffee, but in men. So you can see uh, Pastor Okan is tall, is vital, he has a fine face, and then you see this as well. So okay, this is exactly what uh, God made by Adam. And then he's, uh, <laughs> thank you very, very much indeed for coming to him. We're truly grateful that you can be part of this conversation. And as always, we are pouring you to ensure that you can have a lot of social media television, all the things that you can do to see on the screen time. Get your questions there, get to know what you say. It's not a final point that you have in this conversation, but it's a continual day that you're going to have to see so that you can support everything that you can do. So thank you very much for today. Thanks for joining us with me. We do it. Well, my name is Koko Lewa, and I'm proud of you to be back with you. Next week on the streets, or in the morning, it's just possible.